We begin today in southern Indiana, Medora, Indiana, here in Jackson County. It is good to be back home again in Indiana, and great to be back in the fall. I miss this weather, I miss this time of year. My favorite time of year, the Halloween season, the autumn, the changing of the trees, the weather, the colors. Man, I sure do miss it. I love Tampa. I love Tampa Bay. I live on Tampa Bay, but if you didn't know, I was born right here in Indiana. Not right here, actually we're starting in southern Indiana, a little town called Medora. I've come to check out an Indiana roadside attraction, this old covered bridge. I'm on my way to visit my family. I came home to visit family. I always come home to visit family. This is where they live. And I always take you with me, because you're family too, so that's why I'm making this video. Welcome back everyone, I am Tampa Jay. There is much ahead. We begin here, and then we're going to see more of Indiana. Heading to see more Indiana. <laughs> see what I did there? Okay, I got dad jokes. Okay, let's start this video. I'm gonna go check out this covered bridge down here. There is much ahead. Indiana is full of covered bridges. Actually, most of the Midwest is. The Medora Covered Bridge that was built in 1875 is actually America's longest covered bridge. Look at it, so long I can't even fit it into this frame. I love seeing these things, these old bridges. I love bridges, I'm fascinated with them. Especially covered bridges. Isn't it cool? It makes me think of uh, that scene from Beetlejuice when the dog jumps off that board. You know what I'm talking about, right? Looks like a fellow by the name of J.J. Daniels is the builder, was the builder, and he built a lot of covered bridges in this part and across America. Look at this. That is so long. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. Look at all the trusses up here. Obviously this is the ceiling of the bridge. And over here, you've got these long arches made of wood and they're doubled. Look at these bolts, look how big those are. But look, these arches I believe there's two on that side and two on this side, maybe three. I think this is a three arched bridge. If these boards could talk, and I'm glad to see that there's no graffiti. Well, there is some, it is prohibited, but it looks like Chad and Lisa decided to mark this bridge. They weren't supposed to, but they did. Uh-oh, exposed. Looking back the other way, you can see that combine way down the hill there in front of that cornfield. And as I bring the camera back and the light starts to focus, we're back on our journey. As you can tell, no cars or vehicles are allowed to cross this bridge. But at one time, this was the main bridge right here and Medora, right over the White River. Wow, that's a long walk. I think I'm about halfway. Hold on. Let's look down here. No water yet down there. Looks, looks like sand. Maybe we're not. Looks like you can park on either side of the bridge if you're coming out here to check it out. Oh, and there's a placard over here. Maybe a bit of history. Yeah, here we go. Confirming that this is the longest historic covered bridge in the nation. The span between the abutment faces is 431 feet. Shed extensions for weather protection extend 16 feet on each end beyond the actual bridge span. The Medora Bridge is also the last remaining three span covered bridge in Indiana. Just on the north side of the White River. Look at that. It's an awesome bridge, so, so beautiful. And I'm glad to see it's well preserved. I always approach rivers in Florida with caution because of alligators, but we don't have to do that here today. Look how well this is built. Oh my gosh, 1875. 125 years ago. Yes, I can do math. <laughs> Look at this. Wow, she's solid. She's solid for sure. Wow. 
I just like rolling the camera so you can look at things. I have found the spot where I can finally fit the entire bridge into frame. Oh my gosh, look at that. And I'm far back too. That's a big boy right there. The longest covered bridge in America. There's quite a few more people showing up to check out the bridge. It is quite an attraction. There are a lot of people who just travel the Midwest to explore each and every covered bridge there is. And as I said before, there is tons of them. So many here in Indiana. This is awesome. This thing is huge. Wow. So awesome. All right, Indiana, here we come. Time to get back on the road. This marker says that there used to be a fort here, here in Velanoia, Indiana. It looks like an old fort that was built during the time of the War of 1812 by Major John Tipton and his militia, Rangers in 1813. Marker on this site. This is Highway 135, the little town of Illinois, right that way, where that truck is going. But I always love stopping to see these things. I had to stop and get a look-see at it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the hometown, the small town that John Mellencamp one song about his hometown, Seymour, Indiana, and this giant mural on the side of this building is fairly new. I think it's been here for about a year, and me being a huge fan of John Mellencamp, I just had to come see it. When I saw that this had been painted, I knew I had to come up and check it out, and I'm so excited to be standing in John Mellencamp's hometown, checking out the giant version of himself right there on the side of this building. It's actually this old guitar music shop. There's a music store inside. There's a big guitar there and there's a lot more guitars behind the walls. But yes, I'm a huge fan of John Mellencamp. Grew up listening to his music. Small Town is one of my favorite songs by him. There are many. I've, I own every single John Mellencamp album, either physically or digitally. So it's a big deal to be here and checking this out. I'm having a moment, so. Thanks for joining me for that moment. I want to give a huge shout out to the artist, Pamela Bliss. You can find her information here, PamelaBlissGallery.com. There is Big John here with a guitar, and Little John over there with his Future Farmers of America jacket that a, a lot of you might have yourself if you grew up in rural Indiana. You probably were a member of the FFA. I know my dad was, but there's John. He's a, he's a spokesman for the small towner and the farmer. Right around the corner is this guy. Hello, Scarecrow. How about a little fire, Scarecrow? Or say, how about a little picking and a grinning? Guitars, piano, violin, drums. This old guitar, specialty music store. Huh, I wonder if uh, John Mellencamp's ever actually been inside there himself. I'm further down 2nd Street, and I'm about to turn down this way, down Chestnut. I'm gonna take a walk, see what we can see. Not too many people walking around down here. I do have my mask in case I want to uh, duck inside somewhere. I might get some food, but check out that guy. <laughs> but I do have one of those as well. Coming up upon these railroad tracks, it's awesome to, to feel this weather and see the fall things. The straw, the scarecrows, the corn, the pumpkins, the gourds. Oh man, it's good to be back. I love seeing these old buildings. These are in great shape too. A lot better than the ones back where I'm from, I've shared before, back in Newcastle. Looks like Seymour has kind of retained itself a little bit better. Always good to see small towns still looking this good. And there's a lot of these kinds of towns down in Florida too that still look great as well. Johnny Cougar's first album, Johnny Cougar Mellencamp, was called the Chestnut Street Incident. Named after the street right here in his hometown, Chestnut Street. How's about a little ditty about Jack and Diane? Oh, Lantern. Paying homage, paying tribute to John Mellencamp here in the heart of Seymour. I really like this guy's shirt and his guitar and, and his head. He's a pumpkin head, isn't he? Feed me, Seymour, feed me. Right at the corner of Chestnut and Lois Avenue, you have this giant sign, Seymour with the musical note there, the, the musical clef, I, I believe. Yeah, the musical clef as the S. Paying tribute to John again. They love 
their hometown hero. And look at that, right on the concrete next to the sign, home of John Mellencamp. That's pretty cool. And right there, it's actually some musical notes that are bike racks. And this old parking meter, I don't know why th this just popped in there. In honor of John Mellencamp's many hours spent as a youth in downtown Seymour. That's right, he used to hang out all the time down here. I, I've watched a few documentaries on John. I always enjoy them. My favorite one is the VH1 Behind the Music. I'll, I will put a link to that in the description below if you care to watch that. Right next to where that parking meter was and right next to the Seymour Community Building is an old building that says Farmers Club. As I pan down the building so we could admire how awesome it looks, I noticed there is a National Register of Historical Places marker that was placed up there in 1984. It's right there to the right of the entryway of the old door. And down here in front of the building is a scary dude, a scarecrow. And uh, looks like he, uh, he's got a virus head. Yep, he's a virus head. And there's a lot of straw coming out of his boots there. Hey, nice boots. Well, it's the Monopoly guy. Ga, 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 ga. <laughs> Look at that. Appropriate being in front of the Jackson County Bank. It looks like each of these establishments are getting creative. Perhaps there might be some kind of contest, but here is the Monop Monopoly guy. He's got the Monopoly money right there in his hand and all kinds of like bats. Those are skeleton bats. Really creative. So cool to see this. And look down here, Mr. Moneybags. I guess that's his name. And over here, you can vote here. Okay, yes. Voting slips are in there and you can walk around and vote for your favorite scarecrow. So far, I got my money on the Monopoly guy. He's awesome. Not open, I just missed it. But Larison's Diner is like the perfect representation of a small town diner. It looks awesome there. Let me see if I can peek in the window for you. Well guys, I've been granted access. This this gentleman here by the name of Rick saw me outside and invited me in to take a look at the place. And isn't this your stereotypical looking, awesome looking American diner. This is Americana for you right here. I can smell the grease. Oh my gosh, they make homemade fries here. It ain't food. If it ain't fried, that's, that's for sure. Check out the counter, I'm panning over. Look at the old booth, the diner. This is classic. Thanks for letting me in, buddy. Take a problem anytime. Thank you. Yeah, I, hope, I hope you guys... Now, I'll have to come back through and get a, get a burger and fries and a shake. Yeah. That'll be awesome. Yeah, Here's a picture of the diner. It looks like back in the 50s, maybe yeah. 60s, 50s. Yeah, the car. Wow, that's so awesome. Look at this old photograph. Look at this, Jim. Oh man, this old diner sign. I love the neon, that's so cool. And they even have a 50s room in the back. Check that out. We're gonna check that out. But also, John Mellencamp actually has some of his art hanging on the wall in here. He actually paints. All right, Rolling Stone street fighting time. G7. Dude, you just hit G8. Someone out there will get that reference. Someone. <laughs> but all of us will be able to check out this old classic jukebox. Wow. I love finding stuff like this. John Mellencamp is actually a painter. He's been painting for, I think, nearly 30 years now. And there's a, there's a print of one of his paintings, The Band With No Name by John Mellencamp, 1995. And it looks like, looks like he signed it there. He has been in here before, and there's another one right there. It's one of his paintings signed by John Mellencamp in 97. Ladies and gentlemen, the Indiana basketball legend Bobby Plump, who was portrayed as Jimmy Chitwood in the movie Hoosiers. Looks like he's been inside here. He signed that photograph of himself on this old Indianapolis Star magazine. John Mellencamp was once in a movie, kind of playing himself. Falling from Grace was filmed right here in the Seymour area. Him and Meryl Hemingway. Shout out to Rick, the awesome guy inside that let me come in after hours and gave me a cookie upon my exit. Fun fact, John Mellencamp still eats in there from time to time. He's been seen in there. Thanks, Rick. Thanks for the cookie. This looks good. Homemade, too. What kind of book do you have in your hands there? Have a little, 
Crow scaring for dummies. That's that's clever. I like that. <laughs> Who do they call in dummy? I'm sorry there. That must be a dumb scarecrow. If you guys are interested in stopping by Seymour and taking a similar trek as I'm doing today, it is right off the interstate, Interstate 65. We are about halfway in between Indianapolis and Kentucky, and we are about five minutes off the interstate. You can get to downtown. You can get right here to Chestnut Street in like five minutes. And the covered bridge is about 20 minutes west of downtown. So there you go. If you want to come hang out where John Mellencamp used to live, where he used to hang out, only five minutes off the interstate. So there you go. There you go. All right, bye John. Bye Big John. Bye Little John. I'll see you next time. I'm coming back here. I, I love Seymour. Had a good time. I want to come back to that diner too. It smelled really good in there. You could smell the place. You could smell how good it was. I could feel it. I can sense it. Man, I should have got there sooner. Oh well. Oh well. All right, time to hit the road. There's still much ahead, my friends. Now entering Hancock County via Highway 52 also known as Old Brookville Road. There's a small town up here where I spent a majority of my childhood. Thought I'd come back and reminisce a little bit. Let's hang out to where I used to, where I used to live. And there's the sign. Welcome to New Palestine, or New Palestine. I like to call it steam. I can't tell if this building's being utilized, but I had to stop here for my brother. This is where he went to preschool. Orlando J, if you're watching, if you take a screenshot, it'll last longer. This is where he faced his first bully, and he took him down. Orlando J got bullied here by a, a kid named Joseph until finally he wasn't having it, and he struck back. And of course, just like any good bully story, that was the last time Joseph dealt with Orlando J. Oh, the crunchiness of the leaves beneath the toes. I have stopped to reminisce at the New Palestine Lions Club. It was in this parking lot I spent many a falls for fall festivals, carnivals, and fish fries. I've even had a couple picnics underneath this awning here. On those same picnic tables, those have not changed. This is, that's pretty awesome. That tree is, I'd say, lost. A quarter, maybe one third of its leaves. The majority of them still hanging on. They're falling, that's for sure. At the corner of Jim Road and 52, used to be my local video rental store. Welcome to Video Junction. A couple months back, I was in Fort Myers and I mentioned Video Junction. I remember buying, or my parents buying, a copy of Return of the Living Dead here for me and I still have that VHS copy. This was Video Junction and at one point after it closed it was a blimpy, a blimpy uh, a sub restaurant, a submarine sandwich and you can still make out the colors of blimpies there if you're familiar with that eatery but it's so cool to be back here at Video Junction. And right behind me along 52 in this lot used to be the old fire station and one of my first field trips was inside of that fire station. Sad to see it gone. I was, I came through quickly a couple years ago, the fire station was still there. But one thing that is still there is the old Napa store. Sitting vacant, the old Napa store where I used to come buy parts, auto parts with my dad. Never did I think when I walked in that building I would work for this company for almost a decade. Sad to see it vacant. Well look right inside there, there's the old Napa sign that used to hang right on right upside the building there. Dang, and look, gumballs. I wonder how old those are. Hey, I think I, think I actually got gum, a gumball out of there before. A long time ago, this has been there for a long time. All right, taking a ride on Pine Street. Oh, I forgot to put my seat belt on, oh my gosh. I haven't been down this street in ages. I used to live down here. Ladies and gentlemen, 48 Pine Street. I lived here back in 1993 with my family. Man, the memories are coming back. This entire neighborhood, I used to play in these streets, used to ride my bike, 
I remember trick-or-treating. This is where I lived when we went to Florida for the first time. I would have come home from Disney World and Universal Studios in Florida. We would have come home right here. I remember Christmas too. Good memories on Pine Street here in New Palestine. And even Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park came out when I lived in this neighborhood. I'm walking around. I'm trying not to be creepy. This is much smaller than I remember it. It used to be so big. I was little, so I'm trying not to freak people out. Not a lot of YouTubers in these parts. Actually, you can't even go down this street on Google Maps. Try it. Nope. But yeah, I'm strolling past my old house. I lived a we we moved a lot, but I lived in the new Palestine, the Sugar Creek, Southern Hancock County area, Greenfield, for about eight years of my life. So, man, I can remember riding my bike down this road and popping a tire right there <laughs> while we're, while wearing a Terminator 2 Halloween costume. Some of my fondest childhood memories, some fun moments right here on Pine Street. Good to see this house again. All right, I'm gonna get back on the road. If you counted the number of cheeseburgers, french fries, and grape slushies I had here when I was a kid, well, you're counting up into the hundreds. Iconic, classic nostalgia, and right across from Pine Street, too. Down over there, past Hickory, is where I lived. Very cool to see Frosty Boy again. I wasn't too hungry, but I ordered some ice cream. This place has not changed. You ever feel like you go to a place and like you were just there yesterday? I feel that right now. I wanted the pumpkin flurry, but they were all out of pumpkin. Go figure, it's fall. But I got the s'more flurry. It's got cinnamon toast crunch, and yes, it tastes like a s'more. I'll have some more. Another thing that hasn't changed are these cups. I believe they're the same pattern as they were almost 30 years ago. A Frosty Boy, New Palestine, Indiana. Come on down, check it out. Tell them Tampa J sent you. Now a home, this building used to be a restaurant long before I lived here even. Must have been 30 years ago, but cool to see an RC cola sign. And an old clock up there, eat here. Well, I think the here is implied, it just says eat. Drink RC Cola and eat. Still cool that that's it there. Never thought I would appreciate that later in life, passing it as much as I did when I was a kid. But now I am, here I am, and I'm about to head left down there. From 1997 to 2001, my family lived here near 500 South and Shellin Drive. I have so many memories of riding my bikes out here passing this line. Actually, I used to climb on top of it with neighborhood friends. The neighborhood's behind there. We lived on 500 South across from this cornfield right down there to the left. I bet these people think I'm from Illinois with the Illinois plate. I always try to get a plate of the state I'm visiting. That way I don't get as many weird looks when I'm getting out of my car with a camera, but it doesn't always happen. But I'm from Haddonfield, Illinois, that's what I've been telling people. Not too far from where I lived, actually about five miles away, out in the middle of nowhere, is Brandywine Elementary. This is where I went from third grade to fifth grade. Noticing the grass and how it's well mowed, and checked out the pattern. I was just walking over here so you get a better look at the side. There you go, Brandywine Elementary School, right on the the Brandywine Creek, which runs right out there past where I used to go to recess. There's the playground on that side of the building. Beyond those windows there is where Orlando J went to, went to kindergarten, my brother again. I'm just going down the building. This is where the bus used to park. Used to get off the bus right here and there's the office. Wow, that has not changed. That's amazing like I was here yesterday. And let's see, my third grade classroom was right there. Mrs. Wilfley's class. Oh, good old Mrs. Wilfley. I haven't thought about her in ages. She was so kind. And right over here is where I played a lot of pickup football games there at recess. This is a grass lot right behind this chain link fence in between the trees. A lot of two-hand touch football. 
and those swings out there, those, those have not changed as well. We come back once again here on this channel, back to Greenfield, Indiana. I'm standing on US Highway 40, the old National Road. You're looking at the former home of James Whitcomb Riley, the Hoosier poet. Shout out to my cousin who, while on a field trip inside this house, said that he had a paranormal experience. He was at the tail end of the tour and he said that he was pulled inside of a closet and held for a good two or three seconds. Of course, running out immediately. And that is not the only time I've heard that story. I've heard other accounts of the same thing happening. Didn't happen to me when I, I took my field trip here. But shout out to my cousin Brandon if he's watching him. He might be. Oh, must be a, a cat up in a tree or something. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor. Give it a thumbs up right down there below, right there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Guys, I'm going to end it right here next to good old James Whitcomb Riley in front of his old house. It was a bit of a different type of video today, and I hope you enjoyed it. The Bridge, John Mellencamp's, Seymour, Indiana, New Palestine, a big tour, kind of kind of about me and my, my life there when I used to live there. You know, I love going around documenting things, and sometimes I make these things for memories too. It's a bit too... It's a way to express myself and share my thoughts and sometimes share memories and that's what I did today. And I really thank you guys for coming along um, coming along today and for all, all my videos. We'll be back to something more normal next time though. I got some more plans here, some more Halloween stuff ahead. So much to do still in October and in Indiana, right James? The goblins will get you if you don't watch out. That was my favorite line that he wrote. The goblins will get you if you don't watch out. Kind of wrote it that way too. That's why I put the emphasis on get you. But speaking of that, I'm going to end this video. Thanks for, thanks for watching guys. There's much ahead my friends. Now it is time for me to ring the king. Uh, 14, sorry about that. I, I, what I did was I picked it up and then I was like, oh, I'm not ready and I hung it back quick and I think it stayed on. Well, I'd like to order a, a 10 inch royal feast. I have rung the king here at Pizza King, my royal feast. See, I love pizza so much. Everywhere I go, I get pizza, it's my favorite. I like New York pizza, I like Chicago pizza, but my absolute favorite this Indiana pizza. You've seen this before if you've been watching a long time. Oh, that's hot. That's a good hot though. That hurts so good. <laughs> Another John Mellon Camp song. All right, I'm gonna eat this. See you guys later. Thanks for joining me.